It's here, yay! Halo Season 2 has returned, and after all the interviews and articles that came out promising us that this show was essentially a soft reboot and Season 2 was a step in the right directions, and then to prove their point, they come out and drop two episodes back to back to really show us that they haven't changed anything and it's the same piece of shit it was last season. In fact, these first two episodes, really boring. But let's just go ahead and jump right into it. So right at the start of the first episode, we see the fallout, well, the immediate fallout, sorry, from the end of last season where Cheeks or Chief, whatever you want to call him, is supposedly dead, but he's not dead. He's just on the brink of death. And in order to save him, we have to have Cortana severed from the connection of his head. Because remember, in the Silver Timeline, Cortana is uploaded directly into his skull. We then jump forward six months, but we don't know it's six months. We only find that out later that it's a six month time jump. We see that the UNSC is currently evacuating a civilian village, but these civilians don't really want to leave. This is their home. And Silver Team, Silver Team, not Blue Team, Silver Team is there to help the UNSC with this process of evacuating the civilians because it appears that they're sending Master Chief, Cheeks and the Silver Team on these really low effort, minimal risk missions because they kind of have the baby gloves with Master Chief with everything that's gone down with season one because Silver Timeline. Now I do have to say that the dialogue, oh, it's, it's a problem for me. We have the Spartans, uh, Vanek who acts way more like Master Chief, at least in season one he did. And he kind of starts talking about how he's had his pellet removed. Remember in the Silver Timeline, they all have pellets in their asses? Well, he's had his removed, and now he likes to watch animal shows or something like that. Don't get me wrong, I also enjoy watching animal shows and animal videos and all that type of stuff, and I'm sure you do too. But, again, we are not Spartan 2s in the UNSC, are we? I watch programs sometimes. Programs? Like, about animals and stuff. Oh. So as this evacuation process is going on, we see that the Covenant has in fact arrived near the village and Chief is on a mission. He leaves because there are some missing Marines and he wants to go save them before everything goes to shit. Unfortunately, by the time he gets there, but by the way, he does have to travel through a foggy area and uses a grapple. Yeah, they gave him the grapple from Halo Infinite, so that's kind of cool. He uses all that to get into the area, but when he gets there, the comms aren't working correctly and he does find the Marines. Now, when he first finds the Marines, I took issue with this part because they can't tell from a distance that he's essentially on their side and they fire shots at him and then he jokes and mocks them for being such poor aim. Now, I don't like that. Master Chief never does that type of stuff. Master Chief does not talk down to other Marines, especially ones that are ranked lower than him. He, he, he's all about bringing people up. He's a hero, but in this one, and there's a moment in episode two, which is way worse, he's just an asshole. So I took a bit of issue with this moment over here. But they don't have much time because as this is all going down, the elites, the Sangheili arrive, and they're using their active camouflage to pick off the Marines one by one, which does result in a fight breaking out, obviously, between Master Chief and the active camouflaged elites. And the fight itself is... Fine, I guess I didn't really have too much issues with it. I did like how he beats down one of the elites and snaps their neck. The main problem I had with this scene is shaky cam. I just always find shaky cam annoying. And in a fight scene like this where there's energy swords being swung and they cut his assault rifle in half and he's like punching the piss out of him and all that type of stuff. I don't think shaky cam is the correct technique to use for a scene like that. But then as the fight comes to its close, Master Chief is doomed because he is surrounded by a dozen or so other elites who reveal themselves by igniting their energy swords. And it looks kind of cool. But then we have this really weird moment where they extinguish their energy swords and leave. Now this is so incredibly stupid. Because it does look like they're showing Mackie or Chief believes he saw Mackie, you know, the Human Covenant spy that he banged in the end of season one or whatever. The one that Cortana watched him fuck. Just using your whole... Good love using your whole... This is stupid for one main reason. So even in the Silver Timeline, they still refer to Master Chief as the Demon, not just a Demon, the Demon. Now, of course, in the real canon, he only becomes the Demon after he destroys a Halo ring in the events of the first game. In this timeline, he's already referred to as the Demon, and when these elites see him on the ground and they have a chance to go and kill him, 
I'm pretty sure they would go and kill him instead of taking orders from a human within the Covenant, which is a whole other thing within itself. But why would they do this? Why would they evacuate when they have the chance to kill Master Chief? Because at that moment, as they are leaving, a Covenant glassing beam, multiple Covenant glassing beams come down on their position. One in particular is very close to where this fight broke out. So Master Chief, in an effort to save, I believe her name is Tali, to save her, the one Marine still alive, he jumps on top of her, you see it in the trailer, and uses himself as a shield, which makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. This is a Covenant glassing beam, okay? Not only should Master Chief be dead, not only should the Marine, Talia, be dead, but all the elites who were just there should be dead as well. Everyone involved there should be dead. We even see the village that is being evacuated, we even see that village be destroyed as Pelicans come down to pick up the rest of Silver Team and whatever civilians and UNSC they can, and Master Chief manages to make it back in time with the one surviving Marine. And with Master Chief and everyone back on the Pelican, it's time to do the moment. Remove the fucking helmet, because it wouldn't be Pablo Schreiber if he kept his helmet on then, would it? Yes, in fact, for most of episode 1 and episode 2, you don't see Chief with his helmet on. You're lucky if you see him in armor, full stop. And then with that, we get the best part of the episode. The opening credits begin to play. I genuinely like the opening credits. It's so much better than last season's because, get this, they had this wild idea to use Halo music, and it works so much better. And then as soon as the credits finish, we cut to Master Chief taking a shower, and surprise, surprise, they actually don't show his ass? What? I know, pretty bizarre. Hey, think about the last season. I'm pretty sure you saw his ass in like every episode, hence he got the name Master Chief. So following the arseless scene of Master Chief, we then get a meeting with Silver Team and Admiral Keys. Yes, in this timeline, in the Silver timeline, Jacob Keys got a race swap and a promotion. Okay. Now in this meeting scene here, I actually didn't hate it. I kind of enjoyed it. We have Chief explaining that it's strange to see the Covenant landing on a planet before glassing it. Now, of course, we know in the real lore that when the Covenant does land on a planet, it's to find Forerunner artifacts before retreating and then glassing the planet. Oh, and they even directly mention Oni in this scene over here. I'm pretty sure in season one, they never actually say the letters O-N-I, but now, it's kind of prominent, and I'm cool with that. And this is also the same scene where they introduce James Ackerson, who, I don't know, maybe I'm being pretty nitpicky here, but I think he looks a little bit younger than what he's supposed to. And then we go over to the worst parts of this whole show, well, debatably the worst parts of this show, the parts no one gives a fuck about, the rubble. I cannot stand these rubble scenes, and they have not changed whatsoever. So over here we see a group of asylum seekers, essentially, and it's very cringe. Very, very cringe. And one of these asylum seekers offers to trade the location of Dr. Catherine Halsey, who has a bounty on her head, in exchange for asylum and be able to live on the rubble. Now, this gets the attention of Soren because, of course it does, I mean, he's a Spartan. He was the defect Spartan before leaving the Spartan 2 program, and he has this whole speech about, whoa, you can tell me where Halsey is and blah 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 blah, only to reject the offer. So while all that's going on, we jump back over to Planet Reach. This time it's not City Reach, it's just called Planet Reach. And we have a confrontation between Chief and Ackerson where they talk about Catherine Halsey and Cortana. And I bring this up because it always irritates me. The shaky cam is back. Why is there a shaky cam when there's two people sitting down talking to each other? And it kind of goes back and forth between that type of stuff and soaring on the rubble with blah 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 blah. No one really cares. The next part even worth mentioning is back on Planet Reach, we see Jacob, sorry, Admiral Jacob Keyes now, giving a medal to the Marine that Master Chief saved as she is painted as the hero of this situation. And it's here we get some of the most cringe dialogue in this whole show yet. We have Spartans, Spartan 2s, getting into arguments with each other, calling each other bitch and making threats, and even using this line. Suck big ass cream. Nice. Spartan 2s have known each other since they were children, so it makes sense there'd be a bit of banter back and forth between them. 
but I think the writers could have came up with something a little bit more clever. But now it's time to really make Master Chief look like an even bigger piece of shit, because then he goes to confront Akerson about the potential danger that Spartan Team Cobalt is being put in, and we have Chief lose his absolute shit. Excuse me. I told you what hit us on Sanctuary. Nobody out there knows anything. And no one in here seems to give a shit! I absolutely hate this moment. This just is not Master Chief. He's not supposed to lose his composure like this and cause a scene. Even when having a major disagreement, he always stays calm and collected. Give me that chip. The didact has to be stopped. If you won't do that, I will. I am ordering you to surrender that AI! No, sir. After that, we jump back to the rubble, yay, only to see that Sauron has accepted this offer to go hunt for Halsey, so the whole point of him rejecting it in the first place is just pointless, absolutely pointless. It's just there to fill the runtime. But speaking of pointless, we then jump over and see Master Chief in what is the most sus civilian outfit. If you're trying to be inconspicuous and you're walking around dressed like this, you are probably the first person the police are going to pull over, okay? So he's trying to be inconspicuous and he goes and has a meeting with Paranoski, who is no longer part of the UNSC because someone had to take the fall for Halsey's actions, so they blamed Halsey's rival or one of Halsey's rivals. Okie dokie. Now, she tells Chief that he needs to go and gather evidence that the Covenant is changing its tactics. What is she possibly going to help with, okay? She has no pull in the UNSC. She's out of the UNSC. What I don't understand is all this situation is sus as fuck. Master Chief is looking at the Covenant going, they're doing something very different here. Ackerson is not helping whatsoever. Jacob Keyes has just sort of become like a government stooge or some shit like that. Why does Chief not go directly to Lord Hood? and ask him to help and to explain to him what's going on. This is all just convoluted for the sake of it. And again, if Paranoski is out of the UNSC, who, what could she possibly offer? And then as Soren and his group of pirates, along with this potential asylum seeker, and they arrive at the location of where he's saying Halsey is, it then turns out the whole thing was just a plot to trap and arrest Soren. Now, again, I would also argue that this is a pretty convoluted setup. If you know where he is, you know that he's at the rubble all the time, Instead of just going in and setting up some kind of sting operation, why would you set an undercover hoping that he would take the bait when he originally rejected it? So if he just committed to his original plan of rejecting the offer, this whole plan would have fallen apart. And then, oh wow, the, the final moment. <laughs> This is just so dumb, man. So Chief, again, in like this weird, inconspicuous, wannabe, inconspicuous civilian outfit, goes to this, like, I don't know what it is. It's like a, an AI prostitute place where you can pay to have an AI talk to you and comfort you. I don't know. Apparently, that's a thing. So he goes there and pays to talk to this AI hologram about Mackie. I, I don't even know. Now, now, this is all before the big major reveal at the end of episode one. Episode one of new seasons always have a big reveal at the end to get you to watch the next episode. And what is the reveal here? Kwan is back, baby! What the fuck even is this piece of shit show? But look, I will admit there is some elements of things I did enjoy, like I mentioned earlier at the start. But this show, it really is Halo in name only. Chief has the opening scene with the helmet on and that's it. That's all there is with him in the helmet on. The rest of the episode, he's not even in his armor. Nothing really happened in this episode. We have one small fight at the start, and that's it. Now look, I'm not saying every episode needs to be some big major battle or something like that, but this episode was just drama. It didn't push the story forward, it didn't expand the lore, it's just the Covenant's doing something strange. Let's go to an AI prostitute place and talk about a dead girlfriend or some shit like that. Ultimately, for the first episode of a season, I say that's a bit of a letdown, honestly, man. Before we jump into episode two, and oh boy, I do just want to plug that, yes, we have gotten the band back together. We will be doing our live stream breakdowns throughout the week, so keep an eye out for that. Oh boy, episode two. Here we go. Episode 2 kicks things off as we get to see Halsey, who is on the run, but is living very comfortably with another woman who is having some seriously bad nosebleeds, 
kind of like the Flash clones they created, at least in the original lore. I can't remember if they did that in the Silver Timeline. But anyway, she's probing this other woman for answers on their location, such as who runs this place, what's beyond these doors. It's pretty evident that she's more of a captive than anything, but it does seem like a nice place, maybe to make her comfortable. And then we jump over to the Silver Team, where we get an Easter egg with the acknowledgement of Omega Team. Now, while this is a little cool Easter egg over there, I can't help but be a little bit annoyed about this. So we can have Omega Team, a relatively unknown, obscure Halo Spartan team, but we can't have Blue Team, the team that Chief is actually a part of. Well, well then I guess this show doesn't even give us a proper Master Chief, so I guess that is kind of redundant. Anyway, and then that leads us into the opening credits, which again, I do actually quite like. And as soon as the credits end, we are introduced to our favorite Halo character. No, not you. Or you. Or even you. It's Quan. Yes, Quan is back and she's out there stealing from markets and being tracked by what I believe are criminals. And let's face it, the mighty Quan will not fall to these insignificant males. They are weak and pathetic for she is the great and mighty Quan. She is easily able to overpower one of them and escape their pursuit. With how super duper awesome she is, she even manages to space two of her attackers out and then win a knife fight. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty Quan remains undefeated. And then, oh boy, time for another confrontation between Akerson and Chief. Now this time Chief goes in there arguing about the status of Cobalt team and where are they? Why is there no reports of them? And what's with this bullshit thing of them being on standby? They've never even returned. We get more of Chief losing his complaints and how Ackerson has manipulated the account of what happened in the previous episode. And then it's a whole bunch of rubble and quan scenes. Look, this whole character and plot really should never have returned in season two. It never should have been there in the first place, let's face it. But this whole thing needs to be dropped. In a show that as weak as the Halo Paramount show, even these scenes stand out as being particularly shit. But then going from all that, we jump over to Silver Team doing a training exercise and quite frankly, I liked how this training exercise really put emphasis on just how much faster and stronger Spartans are to regular humans. Now, if only we had some other hardcore humans to really put in perspective just how far ahead Spartans are. For real, just drop Quan and add a side plot of ODSTs for fuck's sakes, just do that. And this part here, I'll be honest, is probably a little bit nitpicky, but I don't think this show has earned the right to have any breathing room, and there is a pun there. So it does show Riz failing her exercise and falling off the mountain, and this is where I may be wrong and maybe nitpicking a little bit, but to me, it kind of sounds like she's coughing up water. Obviously, that's impossible. No water would be able to get into the helmet. I mean, we see them in outer space, well, at least in the real lore and they can breathe just fine so I can't imagine how water would get in. But then again, I would not put it past this show that somehow water did get in. <laughs> you tell me, am I wrong? Am I just nitpicking here? Let me know. And I believe that's the only scene in this episode, for memory at least, where we see Master Chief in full armor, including the helmet, because then we're right back into him outside of his armor because then we're right back to him out of his armor in the civilian style life thing. And he has this 400 IQ moment here. He goes to the home of the Marine that he saved in the first episode to confront her about the lies that Ackerson is spreading. Chief, brilliant idea. Why didn't anyone else think of this Master Chief? What could possibly be wrong about a Spartan going to confront a Marine about the lies that a senior officer is telling? How could that ever backfire? And then what's even better is the Marine's mother then invites him in for dinner. Oh, and there's this whole other side plot about Riz being injured and having a bit of a breakdown. But who cares about that when you can have Master Chief eating dinner with a Spanish family. They even make a gay joke about him. Hey, look at this guy. He must have women climbing all over him. Probably some men too. <laughs> And then on top of that, they even make a KDR joke. Hey, shout out to all the gamers out there that know what a KDR is. This one's for you. What's your KDR? Kill death ratio? Come on, man, you don't play Spartan Attack? 
I don't keep score. And then when some people at the dinner table realize he is a Spartan, they begin to fanboy a little bit instead of being like, yo, why is there a Spartan at our dinner table? This seems a bit weird. But it's all worth it because after the dinner, he finally gets his moment to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation that he's always wanted, where she talks about having survivor's guilt. And that's why she didn't tell the full story to Ackerson. And then Chief being the absolute noble, majestic hero that he is, gives her these comforting words. You think about it every day. Their faces pop up when you least expect. Doesn't get better. Just gets further away. Now that is simply not Master Chief. Chief would never break someone down like that. He is a hero, not this asshole who we have on the show. I want you to compare what you just saw on that clip to this clip. I'm worthless. You should leave me here with the rest of the carpets. We all fail. We all make mistakes. It's what makes us human. I'm sorry, Chief, but how have you ever failed? I should have protected Cortana. Stopped everything from going wrong. I failed her. I will not fail you. Now you tell me who the hero is. Towards the end of the episode with Halsey, we see that she is actually a captive of Ackerson. And it's painful to see just how this show is so desperate to set him up as an antagonist in the show. Now, please, 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 forgive me for my ignorance here. But if we wanted an antagonist in a Halo show, how about the Covenant? You know, that genocidal collection of alien species that is hell-bent on their crusade to wipe out the human race? Just an idea. While Chief is trying to locate Cobalt Team, we see that Ackerson is speaking with Cortana. And she looks like she's going to ask to speak to the manager at any moment and based off the conversation those two have and then what she figures out it's pretty obvious that the covenant is already on reach and unsc is fucked wow something they actually got right that unsc has no chance of winning this battle they actually got something right for now at least that can change so the episode ends with silver team going to visigard relay now that name might sound familiar to you because that's where the first mission of the halo reach game takes place and we even get a scene in Sword Base, which is another prominent area from Halo Reach, the same game, where we see the Covenant fighting Marines in what I believe is actually the only fight of this whole episode, and it's a very short fight at that. And we get the grand reveal that Mackie is back. Woof! We're two for two on grand reveals now. Somehow Mackie has survived and has returned and is still in a prominent position in the Covenant. Now, I'm not going to go on my rant about a human being in the Covenant, but it's really fucking stupid. That whole concept is fucking stupid, just like the show is. And that's where episode two ends. This show is still shit. And these first two episodes are boring and could easily be combined into one less slightly boring episode. If I had to do some quick math off the top of my head, I'd say Master Chief is both out of his helmet and out of his armor for... 90% of the scenes you see him in, maybe, maybe a little bit more, honestly. All of you out there that were holding on to hope that this was some type of reboot and course correction, it's not. It's really not. This show sucks, plain and simple. It's the silver timeline. Every problem that still happened in season one is still very prominent in season two, at least at the start. Is there potential for this show to get better? Well, it's gonna struggle to get worse i'll tell you that much i think there's one of the few things that we could potentially have is we could get some really cool battle scenes but that's about it that's honestly about it that's all they have to offer and that's an if if we shall see when we get there but you tell me what did you think of these first two episodes do you think it's a course correction or do you still think it's a piece of shit let me know in the comments and hopefully we'll see you for the live stream breaking down these first two episodes See ya.